I'm going to cover uh, quickly the theory on this chapter uh, 15 kinetics of a particle impulse and momentum he again says kinetics of a particle uh, but it, uh, you will see we're talking um, most cases of more than just one particle um, the uh, impulse and momentum approach uh, allows us to solve problems where force, velocity, and time are given. Uh, power and energy, you saw we have for force, velocity, and displacement. And it's an uh, integral formulation of Newton's second law uh, where you state acceleration as uh, dv over dt and then you integrate force with respect to time early we integrating force with respect to displacement um, and then um, the uh, term m times v uh, or the dv um, that's um, uh, considering most cases that mass is a constant moves in front of the integral but he, you can see it could be uh, the end of the chapter there are examples or cases where mass could also vary okay um, <clears throat> so with um, a constant mass then we have uh, the uh, to the right we have this simple form um, the product mass uh, times velocity uh, at the final uh, instance and at the beginning minus mass times velocity at the initial instance and um, we define the uh, integral as the linear impulse I and we define the product M times V as L and this is the linear momentum okay um, and we can have multiple forces not just one so you can see here a sum of forces uh, and you can work with them individually or with the resultant um, anyway so the way it's uh, stated um, here can be uh, rewritten where we have initial uh, linear momentum plus the impulse of the forces upon the particle uh, equals the final linear momentum. The integral, the uh, impulse, uh, the linear impulse is uh, between times t1 and t2 is going to be the area under the curve uh, f versus t. Okay, If force is constant then uh, we're talking about uh, a rectangle and uh, uh, area of rectangles when over here is easier to evaluate. Um, the, in the process of uh, finding solutions um, you'll see we'll sometimes draw this kind of diagram showing the initial momentum, the impulse diagram and then final momentum um, with you know plus and equal sign here. And we can explicit uh, the, both the linear momentum and linear impulse over x, y, and z axis uh, of an inertia reference frame. Type of problems where uh, impulse and momentum are uh, useful is um, uh, when um, uh, we have forces acting for a given interval and we want to study their effects uh, or when we have uh, collision between bodies and uh, in that case uh, we're going to neglect the effect of uh, external forces so we'll have two particles in interacting the impacting forces are internal forces uh, their net effect upon the system is going to be uh, zero your action or reaction uh, so uh, yeah, for impacting uh, uh, situations between particles or particle with a wall, um, we're talking about uh, linear momentum conservation. Uh, although energy is not conserved, 
uh, always, unless we have, you will see, uh, ideal impact. Um, okay, so if we have systems of particle, then we're talking about uh, some of their um, linear momentum uh, initially and finally, and then the sum of forces, external forces act, act, acting upon the system. Uh, again, internal forces, they occur in pair action and reaction, and their net effect is, is zero. Um, okay. And we can uh, we can uh, uh, study systems of particles as uh, or uh, through uh, their center of mass. So the linear momentum of the center of mass of the system of particles initially plus the this integral, which is. Uh, linear impulse of external force upon the system equals uh, linear impulse of the center of mass uh, uh, at the end or at uh, time two. And um, on this page, uh, there's procedure for analysis. Um, so again, problems where force time velocity are given and um, uh, we need to uh, choose a reference frame that's inertial. Uh, we need to identify forces that uh, can contribute um, linear impulse and um, uh, state the equation the way we know it. And then um, either we have a constant force or a force that's uh, changing with time and um, uh, so uh, you know there uh, they could be uh, vector equations or working with the uh, uh, with components um, this could be applied just along one uh, one direction here's an example here with a um, with a tennis ball pitching machine and the particle is the ball and you have the friction force and you have the normal force and um, um, other sample problems follow for example here we have a, a crate of a given mass and there is a force that's applied at an angle and acts for 10 seconds and it starts from rest we want to find the velocity after 10 seconds um, it will be only the uh, the x direction components of this 200 force is producing uh, linear momentum uh, or linear impulse, uh, and um, being a constant form uh, force, we just uh, you know solving this integral. It's easy, okay, and um, and we. Um, um, and it also says the normal force. Normal force, you you you, you can write uh, linear momentum uh, or momentum uh, impulse momentum equation for the vertical axis, but that this is equivalent to just saying that since velocity is zero in the y direction, just sum of force equals zero, uh, and it's something we tell right away. So the weight of the crate is the reaction from the normal surface. Uh, you don't need to go through this uh, this uh, you know step two. Uh, the fi uh, final velocity or velocity after 10 seconds of the action of this force it comes uh, right away from uh, from the impulse momentum equation. Uh, another problem uh, with uh, uh, with a crate and uh, and a force, and here we have, in addition to the load applied, we have the the component of the weight along the uh, the incline that's contributing um, uh, linear impulse, uh, and then there's friction which opposes motion. Okay, uh, but otherwise, you know. Uh, and it's not from rest, rather, uh, 
there is an initial velocity v1 uh, but what we um, so it's a in a sense it's this same time problem with a little bit more um, uh, or the two additional um, external forces acting upon the upon the crate mm, here we have another example uh, with two masses and um, the system is uh, is released from from uh, rest and uh, we want to find the uh, velocity you know if you know for block B you can tell velocity block A right away uh, after five seconds uh, and it starts from rest okay so um, we write uh, impulse momentum equation for uh, block uh, A block for block B block A is acted by uh, two tensions in the cable block B by just one tension in the cable um, and um, you can also relate uh, the velocities of A and B by stating that the length of the cable is constant so it will be 2SA plus SB is the length of the cable and that makes the uh, block at A uh, or block B traveling twice as fast um, because of the the way um, the the system, you know, the two masses are uh, chosen. Um, the block A is going to move up. Block block B is going to move down. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, there's there's preliminary problems and uh, uh, regular problems. Uh, in between what I did I printed just the theory uh, pages uh, so let's look at uh, conservation of linear momentum for a system of particles so this is uh, the early equation where the uh, the linear impulse uh, part is missing so we have no external uh, forces so it says external impulse acting upon the system is zero and we have this uh, simplified equation um, and uh, so this statement is called conservation of linear momentum that is linear momentum uh, initial uh, configuration equals linear momentum uh, or sum of linear momentum an initial configuration equals sum of initial uh, of um, uh, linear momentum at the final configuration configuration 2 Um, and uh, so sum means is a system of particles and we can uh, replace this with a study of just the, the center of mass um, the, the type of problem we can solve using linear momentum conservation equation is for um, the uh, systems where um, the external forces like gravity or friction um, so things uh, like impact where uh, time is very short uh, less than a second and gravity the, uh, the linear impulse external impulse of gravity and external impulse of friction are negligible it will be only the uh, internal forces acting but those are action and reaction that's why they don't show in this uh, in the linear momentum and that's some and um, so yeah we can we can study impacting of uh, particle as um, and um, so yeah well, like I said the uh, uh, time interval is very short between one and two and we have impulsive forces those are uh, action and reaction non impulsive forces those are uh, gravity uh, or weight effect of gravity uh, and effect of friction uh, okay, so here too we have procedure for analysis highlighted um, and the, it begins by choosing a reference frame uh, showing the uh, system before and after the event and applying the uh, 
the equations. We can uh, then uh, analyze just one of the particles. Say we have an impact between two particle problems and we can evaluate by studying just one of the particles we can evaluate the average uh, impulsive force um, that, uh, that develops. Um, so here is one sample problem where we have two uh, train cars they travel towards each other with the given speeds and then, then they uh, they, they get coupled and question is what would be the velocity of the uh, two cars coupled together right after uh, the event uh, and then we can calculate the average force that's generated um, by analyzing just one of the uh, of the cars could be uh, either A or B to calculate the average uh, force, um, average force between them, um, if there's information about how long the the coupling event takes place, so you can see it's short, point eight seconds. Um, and then this other one, it uh, examples bumper cars, and it says no energy is lost during the collision. So in addition to the impulse. Uh, or rather the conservation of momentum equations mass of car A, velocity of car A plus mass of B, velocity of B before and mass of A, uh, velocity of A after, mass of B, velocity of B after so this is one equation, then energy conservation again, there, no energy dissipated uh, so ideal case when there is no energy dissipated during impact so write uh, the energy conservation equation this allows us to calculate uh, the velocities of the of the two bumper cars after the impact. Um, so two equations, two unknowns, and we can solve for for the velocity of the two cars after impact. Um, the the other example here uh, is uh, with a uh, uh, hammer, 300 kilogram hammer that is driving a pile into the ground and um, uh, there's no, uh, so the hammer stays with the pile, okay, there's no, there's no rebound and um, uh, so um, the, the equations here are of uh, energy conservation and then conservation of momentum equations and um, if we if we're to uh, what else determine the impulse um, okay the impulse the in, that integral so uh, linear impulse um, and it's where uh, you're after applying energy conservation and uh, conservation of, of momentum you go back and analyze just the hammer uh, and uh, the uh, this allows us to calculate the average impulsive force uh, or rather not the force it says what would be the impulse so force can vary but it's an integral of that uh, variable force over um, over the short interval of, uh, of the event. Uh, this, uh, these are stand uh, or rather classical problems um, where uh, a person uh, is throwing an object you can see like jumping in a boat or jumps from a boat um, so he or throws a, bo a, a, a box and uh, it's firm on the boat and throws this uh, mass at four meter per second. And the question is, what will be the uh, the speed of the boat and the par person? Uh, so we have the boat weight, the the person's weight, and the mass of the box. So what would be after uh, throwing the uh, the box? And um, 
so there's initially no velocity you know motionless boats box and person and then um, the man and the boat travel with the velocity uh, VB and then the box travels with velocity velocity of the box but this would be relative to the to the fixed reference ring um, and the uh, four meter per second would be relative to the box so uh, or rather the boat I'm sorry so uh, four meter per second would be relative to the boat um, and the boat is already moving when the uh, when the box leaves the arm of the uh, of the purse and that's why the relative motion equation so velocity of the box and velocity of the boat plus velocity box relative to the boat and this is the one this is um, the velocity of the box relative to the boat but other than that uh, the, the conservation of momentum equation was used was this correction that the velocity of the box is relative to the to the boat okay and same was this cannon problem so we have the muzzle velocity but the cannon is recoil type so by the time it leaves the uh, the, the projectile leaves the uh, exits the, the barrel uh, it has this velocity relative to the barrel which is in motion backwards so linear momentum conservation initially uh, projectile and cannon are at rest and then we have the um, we have the cannon moving backwards we have the projectile it's in eight pounds moving forward and is the velocity of projectile um, relative to the cannon which is in motion so that's why this other equation and what we know is your know, muzzle velocity would be the relative velocity between the the projectile and the recoiling uh, barrel um, okay and the uh, observation is made if the cannon is uh, is not uh, so instead of being a spring supported possibility of recoil it's firm on support this is not a, um, a momentum conservation uh, instance uh, why is that because essentially the the cannon would be solid with the earth which has very very large mass and um, there will be um, in uh, in this equation will have a very large mass and uh, you know it, uh, it, uh, it becomes uh, what an unbalanced equation like this is infinity one of the terms of infinity so momentum is not conserved, conserved. impact um, is a class of problems where um, the uh, momentum conservation um, is uh, is very useful of uh, solving them so again impact where we have two particles traveling towards each other or they can travel at an angle this is called oblique impact um, so usually you're given the velocity before impact of the two particles and, and if it's an oblique impact you, uh, you're also given the angle and um, uh, you want to know uh, what is the velocity after impact the particles could separate or could stay together that's called plastic impact uh, remember the um, the pole and the hammer which stayed with the pole um, okay and then for oblique impact we also want to know what's the angle uh, of what will be the angle of the two particles after impact if they stay together they will travel at an angle that is um, uh, other than um, uh, or function of the two uh, theta and phi angle so the type of diagram that you um, you you would draw 
is to show the particles before impact and the particles after impact and then here it shows what is happening in between so uh, in this case you see uh, velocity or yeah velocities are uh, in the same direction you'd expect vol uh, particle A to have a higher velocity to catch this particle B there is um, they contact they deform uh, this is when the linear impulse but is action of action and reaction force so uh, for the the assembly of the two particles the net effect was zero so they deform and then they start separating you have the, uh, the separate uh, the restitution impulse and then after impact they have uh, they travel they separate with different velocity again there there are cases where this plastic impact uh, could be like a bullet hitting a, a w um, block of wood or um, and uh, they stay together but um, they could separate and um, depends on the nature of the material and um, uh, you know the uh, so that happens with loss of energy so you can have loss of energy but because uh, the, for the assembly of the two bodies impacting, because the uh, the uh, impulse of the uh, of the forces, contact forces, impacting forces are action and reaction. The equations hold. So you you may have loss of energy, but uh, momentum conservation applies. That's what I wanted to say. Um, okay, so you you always you will always see this kind of equations: mass, velocity, of particle A, mass, velocity, particle B before impact, and their um, uh, that is uh, uh, linear momentum after before and linear momentum after impact. Um, and uh, if they stick together, of course, there will be uh, V A equals V B. Okay. Now, taking just one particle at a time, you introduce the the this integral, which is the momentum of the uh, what are the imp I'm sorry impulse deformation impulse or the, the interaction impulse, and we define um, okay. So why is this uh, stated here, like taking the particle separate uh, to characterize the uh, the type of uh, interaction uh, again depending on the material of the two particles uh, we define what is called coefficient of restitution and that's the ratio between the um, the, uh, the impact the deformation impulse rather uh, or restitution impulse uh, over uh, deformation impulse and you do this for both um, uh, particle A and particle B and we ultimately end up with, uh, with uh, um, more manageable formula for uh, coefficient of restitution so it would be velocity particle B after impact minus velocity of particle A after impact over velocity of uh, A1 uh, before minus velocity of B before impact okay um, and coefficient of restitution can range between one that will be an ideal uh, elastic impact um, and when energy is conserved uh, so uh, energy conservation can also be stated when uh, E coefficient of restitution is one and um, in plastic impact where the two particles when they collide they stick together uh, ideal impact um, it's it's not it's an idealization uh, but there are cases where uh, it gets very close to one like mar uh, marbles or um, uh, you know ivory or glass uh, spheres uh, impacting uh, could be considered uh, elastic impact, ideal elastic, which equals one.
Um, okay. Mm. If we have um, if we have um, oblique impact, uh, well, here it says procedure of analysis central impact. Central being uh, the angle, so they they are uh, aligned. The velocities before impact they are collinear, and particles impact uh, along their line that connects their centers. The center of mass. This is um, so. Here is the uh, the the procedure. You would need to know coefficient of restitution, or maybe you have enough information to where coefficient of restitution can be calculated. Um, there's one way of determining coefficient of restitution. Really, it's um, um, it's by uh, uh, doing impact tests. Okay, so um, the uh, measuring maybe with a high speed camera the the uh, rebounds height. Of um, of particles, I know of software that's used to uh, simulate granular material. In order to set up the software data uh, or parameters, you need to experiment with the particles, uh, the granules that you want to simulate, and you drop them, uh, and you you measure or record your bouncing height. Okay, for oblique impact, like you see it here. We define a line of impact. We define uh, that is uh, connecting their center it's perpendicular po on a tangent plane, and um, you measure the angles, the initial angles relative to the line of impact. So theta one initial angle, phi one initial angle, v a one, v b one, uh, and then uh, the the velocity of particles A and B after impact and the corresponding angles. Some problems, um, it uh, like for accident or reconstruction, um, you uh, you have information uh, of what happens after impact, and you want to know what the velocities would be or were before impact, um, as well as the orientation of the impacting, say, two vehicle uh, colliding. But there's more information there that needs to be used, um, and it's usually uh, used like um, uh, deformation of the vehicles and what else, the uh, debris trail and uh, other things, um, uh, you know, skid marks, for example. Um, okay, so for oblique impact, you need to, f f f most important part is to uh, define the line of impact correctly and uh, uh, the uh, the transverse plane, the plane of contact, um, coefficient of restitution uh, information, and uh, how how do you how do you go about solving these problems? So, in it's assumed that um, the components of the velocity along the line of impact uh, follow the uh, conservation of the momentum, and then velocity uh, is along the plane of contact they stay unchanged okay so you need to analyze essentially uh, an, an central impact problems using the projected velocities along the line of impact and then recombine the uh, velocities after the impact was the con uh, was the velocity that stays unchanged the, comp the y component and that allows the angle to be s uh, determined and the uh, resultant velocity of the two particles after impact to be calculated. Okay. Um, all right. So there are some uh, there are some problems, sample problems in the book. Uh, this one here uh, with a bag at the end of the rope that hits a a uh, a box. Um, and um, the uh, it will be energy conservation applied to determine the impacting velocity. Uh, known is the the re uh, the angle from which is released. Okay, so you know calculate the impact velocity. You need to apply energy conservation uh, potential energy equals kinetic energy. Um, it will 
will be the lowest point. Uh, and then um, if there is, uh, and it is sort of from a coefficient of residue given, and you state that in addition to the, so uh, that's part one of the problem. What's the impacting velocity of the bag? And you apply conservation of momentum and then use coefficient of restitution information and you have two equations, one and the second one, and two unknowns. Unknowns being the velocity of the bag after impact and velocity of, uh, of the box after impact. Um, okay. This one here, ha it's, it's like an elastic spring that is deformed, uh, stretched over its uh, undeformed length and the ball is released and uh, the spring is strong enough to accelerate the ball until it hits the, the ceiling. Uh, coefficient of uh, rescue formation is given. Uh, we want to know what the impacting velocity is. We need to apply energy conservation. Here we have elastic potential and gravitational potential. Before was just gravitational potential. Find the velocity before impact and then it's impacting with a um, impacting with a surface that uh, that remains um, so velocity does not change uh, and uh, the uh, question is how far the core stretches after ball rebounds and so it won't stretch as uh, much as original it will be stretched less because there's loss of energy coefficient of restitution is only 0.8 um, and uh, but we need to we need to state the um, where is that uh, okay so we need to state um, the coefficient of restitution equation where the velo the rather the uh, yes the velocity of the ceiling is zero both before and after impact. Okay, uh, and then knowing velocity post-impact uh, post of ball B uh, and it's downwards, um, then uh, that's initial kinetic energy and final, uh, when the velocity is zero, maximum stretch uh, would correspond to, uh, to the maximum elastic potential and um, the uh, the minimum gravitational potential. Uh, notice that during impact the or no uh, uh, consideration to the weight of the of the ball um, during impact. This example here is is with uh, two uh, it says discs um, that impact at an angle. 30 degrees and 45 degrees relative to the line of impact. Uh, we determine the uh, velocity that remains unchanged. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, so that's uh, particle A, the smaller one. And as you can see, the velocity, the component velocity along the y direction does not change. Uh, so V uh, uh, AY1 uh, is um, okay, so it's unchanged, and uh, likewise for uh, VBY1, and coefficient of restitution is applied for the, with the velocity in the x direction. And um, so conservation of momentum in the x direction, coefficient of restitution in the x direction, and then the fact that uh, the um, the ultimately the velocity in the y direction is is not changed. So same same values you can see, and for b likewise negative. Um, 
So yeah, negative. Why? Why they lost the sign somehow? Of course, they, uh, they change the direction of the power, he changed the direction of positive x. So once you have the velocities after impact in the x, y, uh, x direction and recognize the velocity uh, or do not change in the y direction, uh, then you recombine and you can calculate the, the corresponding angles. So um, uh, it's not expli uh, explained here fully, but um, that's the that's the approach. Okay. Um, angular momentum. Um, so angular momentum. Uh, the other, uh, so other pages of, of theory for this chapter. And um, here uh, you can you can study the. Um, momentum of a particle relative to if it's two-dimensional motion relative to an axis or a point okay so uh, we define angular momentum as the moment of the linear moment so there we have particle mass m traveling with uh, velocity v uh, momentarily velocities uh, these vectors as shown and you measure uh, the distance to the axis or to the point about which you uh, value the angular momentum uh, notation is H and O in indication where the word the, uh, or about what point that's calculated um, and in general, or uh, more general, if we use vector cross products, uh, we can define angular momentum as uh, as shown here. So, position vector crossed with uh, linear momentum, and uh, uh, vector resultant vector it's normal to the plane formed by the two vectors, position vector and m v. And you use right hand rule um, to essentially rotate uh, vector R towards vector uh, MV, um, uh, linear momentum, um, the shortest path. Okay, so short path being um, uh, towards the small or covering the smallest angle between the two. So in this case, if I take vector r extended above, this will be the smaller angle, all right, and the rotation is as shown, so confirmed. Or otherwise, use the, the right-hand rule. Um, you point your fingers uh, towards the... Uh, the first term, and you, uh, you curl it towards the second term. Um, in 3D, to evaluate the x, y, and z components of the angular momentum, you put it in matrix form and you expand about um, this uh, determinant about i, j, and k. So it will be i, r, y times m, uh, v, z minus r, z times m, uh, v, y. Uh, J because I have one 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 two, so it will be with a negative in front. R X a negative in front parenthesis R X M V Z minus R Z M V X, and then this is one three. It's uh, it's a sum of um, indices is uh, is even. So it'll be plus R X M V Z minus R Z M. Uh, Vx. Um, we can relate the uh, forces acting uh, upon the particle um, when uh, so it says relationship between moment of force and angular momentum. So we have moment of force is radius position uh, vector. Uh, not radius position vector R crossed was the resultant of the forces and this is also equal to um, uh, HO with, uh, uh, with the angular momentum 
and um, um, so yeah it says uh, using appendix V derivations uh, derivative of a cross product uh, we apply it same as for um, uh, when you have scalar product and conclusion is that um, the moment sum of moments of the force is acting upon the particle is the um, time rate of change of the angular momentum upon that particle. Okay, so the result of moment about point O of all forcing acting on a particle is equal to the time rate of change of particles angular momentum. Um, and um, um, okay and uh, earlier it was stated I don't recall if we emphasize that that um, um, sum of forces is um, time rate of change of linear momentum actually this is the way Newton stated his second law of motion uh, not using acceleration, but rather time rate of change of uh, of uh, of linear momentum. So Newton's second law, the way he stated um, in the 1600s, sum of forces upon a particle equals time rate of change of linear momentum. This is a more uh, general formulation because you can have mass a mass that changes. Okay, so. If you have a, a system uh, that is uh, losing mass, uh, then you would need to account for that change of mass in evaluating the, the dot product, or rather the, the I'm sorry, the time derivative. Okay. And if you have a system of particles, you say the same. Um, so you're taking the, the sum of their um, m uh, so you have uh, sum of moments of the external forces sum of moments of the internal forces uh, equals sum of angular momentum momenta uh, uh, derivative with respect to time, time rate of chain of linear momentum uh, the moment of internal forces is zero because they always occur uh, action uh, equal and opposite so this goes to zero um, for the entire system and uh, we end up with uh, the uh, so before we were talking just uh, one particle here we have systems of particles and um, uh, the so this will be the total angular moment for the system. Okay, um, a sample problem here, where um, the uh, the motion, the problem is explained in uh, in uh, polar coordinates and. Um, the the way the way the problem is is solved is by using um, angular momentum. Um, we went about solving a problem like this one, but we used uh, energy conservation and um, um, but here you know using uh, angular momentum makes better use of the, or it, it, it's uh, it's better suited to this, uh, you know, the case of the uh, this this uh, ramp, which is in an arch of circle, the slide which is circular, and radius is uh, is constant. Okay, so um, what would be the uh, what would be the the forces acting will be the weight and normal force normal force does not create a moment it will be just the weight that's creating a moment and um, um, 
So we're given like uh, what the vol speed is at theta uh, given, and um, uh, what else we need? So we need to find the angular momentum tone or at this instant as well as the rate of increase of its speed, and that will be the uh, you know time derivative of the of the velocity. Okay. Um, definitely, we can uh, we can solve this kind of problems with other tools, um, and there are problems where uh, angular momentum uh, consideration are are um, even more useful um, than for say the problem that we looked at, uh, sample problem fifteen twelve. Principle of angular impulse and momentum. Here. Um, we have the, you know, we state that um, the integral of the sum, uh, sum of integral of moments upon the particle or systems of particles taken between T1 and T2 is uh, the difference between the angular momenta at the end of the event minus angular momenta at the beginning of the event, angular momenta. Um, okay, so we define this as angular impulse. Same, we had forces, integral of force dt. Now we have integral of moment uh, of all moments acting. So we have angular, uh, like I said, angular impulse is this integral, and uh, initial angular momentum plus angular impulse equals final angular momentum. And since we're having here vector products, we can we can write in vector form, uh, and not only because we can, um, you know, they all will be. Um, for an arbitrary act, so we can have x, y, and z components. Anyway, so vector formulation here is where we state the, um, you know, this is known, we saw this before, linear momentum impulse of the forces acting, final linear momentum. And here we have initial angular momentum, uh, angular impulse, equals final angular momentum. And the corresponding um, x, y, and z, um, rather, uh, so motion is about an, an axis, as you can see, so, um, you know, it's like rotating because there is no z component. When it comes to z axis, we we uh, we judge by moments. So x and y will be the plane of motion. And if we define an axis about which to uh, evaluate moments and the angular momentum, have this is the third equation. And if you know there is a conservation case, if we have the um, so the, at the, the impulses upon a particle are zero. Um, we have a system of particles and only internal forces acting. Then initial and final angular momentum, they are, um, uh, they are conserved. And could have multiple particles, case in which so just one particle initial angular momentum equals final angular momentum. If we have systems of uh, sum of initial angular momenta equals um, the final angular momenta. And there are cases where you know there are problems where um, uh, you know this statement is uh, is valuable. Um, there is a procedure of analysis, emphasis, you know, free body diagram, choice of the uh, of the axis about which to evaluate both H and 
in the, the angular impulse and um, and then there are some uh, some, uh, some sample problems uh, of the chapter so this one was this automobile moving on a circular road and um, the there is an angular momentum uh, angular impulse due to a force traction force and uh, so we have um, the initial speed of the car and we want to find it at uh, after five seconds when this force is acting okay and um, so yeah this is one and then a second problem is with a uh, is with a um, uh, a ball that is anchored with a cable and you have a force that's uh, uh, causing the uh, uh, or the road the, the string to shorten and initially velocity is four feet per second and we were to calculate um, the the speed um, of the of the ball um, after uh, this has been shortened and expectation is that and also the 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 force of that's the pulling force um, okay and expectation is that the speed will accelerate things that you know from um, you know being explained maybe uh, differently so if you have a figure skater and it's uh, making a spin um, and by moving the arms closer to the body is the speed is increased as for angular momentum conservation think of using a hand drill as you squeeze the trigger and or you, or you can do the same with a, with a small shop vac that you can hold in your arm and you you uh, turn it on and it twists in your in your hand that's the angular momentum conservation instance okay so this this is about it there are uh, sections on steady flow and fluid stream uh, we'll see uh, if we are going to if we're going to cover the as well as proportional variable mass um, this is something that um, that's why dynamics is required for uh, fluid mechanics so we'll be seeing this in fluid mechanics uh, maybe spending a week just on this type of problem uh, if not more okay so and then proportion is variable mass uh, there's a star here um, I'm assuming so certain certain professions make better use of or more use of of um, as I say you work for uh, SpaceX or Blue Origin or or NASA um, and it's only and not only rockets uh, there are airplanes that uh, lose mass as they uh, travel you know they burn uh, they burn full uh, fuel. Um, okay. All right. So this being said, it's exactly 60 minutes of recording. Uh, I'm going to post this, and uh, we'll spend uh, class time uh, doing problems. Uh, thanks for watching.